here we are uh, behind the tying desk. It's mid salmon season. And today we're gonna do a little bit different. Uh, uh, I have in front of me the three last flies we did in our series of pattern of the month. Uh, the moonshine and the uh, Vahaniva and the Taurus Samurai. And they are all big flies that we fish from like five centimeters up to 15 or 20 or how big you dare to fish them. Um, this, our 29th film, it's going to be a bit different because I'm not going to tie one specific pattern. I'm going to tie one specific design. And um, since we're mid-season, I'm going to do what I think is a um, fly that is suitable for the conditions we normally have this time of the year. Well, what I mean about this time of the year is uh, conditions where some of the fish have uh, been in the river and uh, the the, the water is normally low and getting warmer. The fish are trickier. And what we normally do is we fish higher up with smaller flies. And what I'm going to tie today is for sure smaller than these big buggers. But uh, it's also a design that you can, um, you can use it fairly big too. Uh, but you can go down to fish them on micro size so it's it's more design wise and it's going to be micro summarized and i'm going to stop start by doing you one of these guys um and this is like uh well we can call it an orange samurai or a willy gun samurai depending a little bit how you pimp it up with colors but what i do here is that i use our uh medium tubing and there's a few colors on my desk here, just showing you, and we have a silver one here too. Uh, <clears throat> the thing is here, what you can do is that you can do this design to match in a color that you think is suitable for the conditions and the color of the river and all these aspects that actually uh, make you uh, choose one color. And what I do, I start by cutting off a piece, I choose the orange one here now. And uh, I've been talking about a tube cutter so many times, but um, when this film is out, uh, they should be in our warehouse. So hopefully, and unfortunately we don't get as many as we wanted now, but it's been a complicating process, but some, so if you really, if you were among those that's been mailing us about this for years, it's in here for you. Okay, talking, talking. Uh, what I do is I take the orange one and I cut it uh, at an angle like I normally do. Just put it on and uh, I'm gonna use this small. And uh, since I decided I will on this one do a gold colored, cone I will have a, a black uh, extra small tubing to get as much contrast as possible and I start with the uh, tying today with the 12 uh, thread and uh, I use the black one and I cover up this part that I cut and I pull it and I've been saying it before but what's holding material is when you use the stretchability of the thread stretch it out and tie in and it will hold and it works the same with the tubing where the uh, cut part will hold the, the extra small okay super simple little fly but um, let's do let's do a mirage and when I work a black thread on a fluorescent tube I don't want the thread to be seen too much a little bit it's okay but too not too much behind or, or under the the mirage because when it gets wet it will shine through and i don't think the fish will care but i do because i think it looks ugly so i start by that and on this one since it's small i don't use the braid 
I'm just gonna go on with a little bit of uh, dubbing and on almost all my summarize I use the glitz dubbing but since this is small I use RSSS dubbing it's uh, made on a translucent fiber mixed up with uh, different uh, flash materials in different colors and I do the orange here hot orange in flames it's called hot because you have this very strong fluorescent fibers inside of it and I work a little bit at the time put it on and build it up in a way where I taper I want it to be thicker the closer up I come to uh, the head and where the place where the wing should be but it's the same here as on all the mirror on all the samurais is that I leave a bigger part because I'm gonna put a little bit dubbing in front of it too okay the meanest brush in the world brush it up pick up the fibers brush it down make it translucent if I brush away a little bit too much of some dubbing that I think I've done right here I can just take a little bit and put it on again. A little bit with the brush, make it flat on the top. And then I'm gonna work with a straight hair. And I would say that on all different kinds of uh, colorations on the Samurai, you can actually do only black and white hair. I uh, started with uh, a wing that was only black but to get a bit more contrast I put a little bit white underneath and I put it on top of the wing of the tube yes don't use half the diameter of the tubing as I usually do just put a few strands on top cut it off use another piece of straight hair and uh, I use for these ones, the small ones, you can use goat where you have the, the straight hairs of a, of a baby goat. They are pretty good actually. And uh, look at it, take away so it's not going to be too much. Get a nice little tapered shape and tie it in straight on top of the white. Maybe a little longer. And as you can see, it's a thin fly. It's uh, designed to fish fast, to be fished fast, and to be where the wing is right on top of the tube. So it's got a very narrow silhouette. And I would say that the narrower they are, the bigger you can fish them on summer conditions. And uh, I have friends that say that a uh, very slim uh, sun ray samurai kind of fly is the most effective you can fish on on these conditions. <clears throat> I'm just back from the gala. We had uh, <coughs> a lot of water. Tricky conditions, but catching a few fish, and most of them, most of my fish were on um, a thin green samurai. Even though the water was quite high, the green samurai was good for me. Then I take two jungle cocks, start with the one on my side, and uh, tie it in. So it's got the equal length as the tubing. And always cite this uh, on jungle cock. You can't save salmon with one hand and extinct birds with the other. I've told you this before. I think it's important. Take the other one, look from above. Normally I will uh, turn my vise, but uh, since what I do here then get out of focus, 
I don't do that now. I can cut these normally. I cut them one by one. Start by cutting off what I just put on. I don't really see what I do here, but okay. And then, of course, I can take another color here now. Uh, I can put some black in front or a little bit of red behind or, or red in front to make more of a willy gun um, pattern. But, but what I do, I'll keep on with the orange here uh, on this one. And uh, since it's like this, that uh, this little film is more of, of uh, design. We put a little bit of a few different uh, colors into our our pattern of the month pack. Okay, a little bit more. Work it up so you cover up the medium tubing with the dubbing. And what I do, uh, the last thing I do here is just to put a little hackle on and the hackle needs to be tied on the extra small doesn't look so fancy but the good thing with our dubbing is that uh, uh, the fibers are fairly long even on the on the regular dubbing it's not going to be as vulgar as the glitz fly it's going to be more translucent less flashy more of a summer fly and I just brush out this and pull it back put in one or two turns like that and then I do a small hackle and actually well on this I prefer to use the the tiny marabou feathers you can use any hackle here but uh, these are super soft and what I do is that I make sure I take away the fluffiest part in the in the bottom and save so I can do about two turns one or two turns it should not be too much and uh, I do the same as I do with all hackles I do this and I use support and I create this little triangle here and that's what I tie in. A few turns. Wind this on. Double up. And uh, when I'm ready, I just secure it. And this I secure underneath. Trying to get as many fibers going the right way as possible. They're so soft, you can just double them back. But very thin. Maybe this is a little bit too much hackle on for my taste, but it's easy just to strip off a few of the um, fibers if you want. I normally do that on the water because um, it leaves me with more options. It's the same with flash. If you have flash in the fly, on these ones I let the body be the only flashy part that I need. Put on a cone and I will use a gold one here. Little bit of glue, put the glue, use support, put the glue a little bit away from the fly, from the hackle. and. Uh, Hold the hackles, take the thread, pick up some glue. And then pull this down, twist it, and spread the glue down to the fly. It's easier actually to take the fly out of the vise and um, pull the cone down tight. Use support when you cut. Do two to three mil and uh, black fly black lighter right and then just melt it down and the little plastic here will hold the cone and if you hold it like this you will have a good little hole there okay small little summary uh, for being my summary design it's 
it's small maybe five centimeters and uh, but it's extremely thin and this is a fly and actually this is a size I catch quite a few fish on you can also fish them smaller but um, last couple of years I've been actually doing even the summarize in a little bit different way and I'm going to show you I'm going to do uh, one of these guys where I tie on um, on a BTT the brass turbo tube which is uh, um, I thought I had one here yeah here we go the small one they are extremely light uh, but they will help pushing water and they will help the hackle not collapsing even if you want to have a thin wing, uh, you want the hackle to move. So I'm going to do this and let's see what we're going to do it in for a color. Um, I can do, let's say I take the green here. Uh, I take the green extra small. I was going to do it with a, with a black one, but I was out of black here. So. And I start by melting this. Melt it down so I get a little edge on the extra small. Cut an angle. If I cut an angle like this, it's much easier to slide down. You pull in the tube and uh, I told you before, it needs to be tight here or the tube or the cone will start to move. And I, tied it, I pull this down before I put it in the vise. Uh, I keep on tying with my black 12 volt and I can put one turn down on the one turn. You see, this is one of the things that makes BTTs a bit tricky is that they're slippery to tie on. The thread wants to slide down and I solve it by just putting a little glue there. Uh, that way this will, uh, the thread will stay better and I also have uh, some glue for the wing and then I do a little bit of white again and I uh, on these ones I don't put any dubbing behind the wing uh, this is going to be a smaller fly and uh, I'm going to keep it very thin just a few strands of white make sure they're not too long I want the black to be longer uh, than, the, than the white and it will point, point upwards a little bit like this when I tie on the BTT but even if, when the fly is ready it will look maybe like the wing is a little standing a little high but um, when you fish them uh, they will be uh, just, just in a perfect angle. Here we go, again black and white, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, uh, colors I have of the rest of the fly, I normally do the black and white. And um, just a few hairs, try not to cut away too much, because if I do, I... I uh, if I'm careful when I'm cutting, I can tie more flies of the same little piece of hair. And it can be like this, that they point different ways and you look at them and you think, oh, I need to correct this. And you can do it by holding the tips, pulling them back, letting go there and hold them again. You will correct this. But actually the fly will, will fish almost better when you have the hairs pointing different directions like this because you will get more motion into the fly it will look in the, your box or in your wallet like you've uh, missed out but you will get more motion to the fly okay take this tie it in on top of the white don't let it slide down on the sides. Make sure it's on the top. Take this and I 
always pull this a little bit like this when I before I cut it it's like packing the hair um, and since I like it to look the way it looks in the water I do that and then can see how this will this little thing will be again two jungle cocks uh, and uh, I try to keep them quite small and um, I know I use smaller jungle cocks than most people and I tie them in longer always start with the one on my side and form it on my thumbnail to make it follow and again the fly will almost fish better if I don't do this can be a little tricky to make the jungle cocks stay where you want them on the BTT because the edge will press them out and uh, if I have on black here here and uh, and again the fly won't look as good uh, in the wallet or as well tied but you will get more motion and actually a better fishing fly have a good shape on this look from above so I get the eyes to be uh, equally long slide it down a little bit more to the side maybe it looks a bit crazy that uh, I have long thumbnails but I work I, I use them when I tie all the time that's why I have to try to be careful not cutting them too short okay is that good looking good now I take a little bit of dubbing again and uh, this time I'm gonna do our gaudy green and actually what I'm tying here is my favorite color combination for the samurai the green samurai and uh, just spin on a little bit at a time hold back and work the dubbing close up on the wing close to the BTT little bit again and of course I tie some of these flies with a different color of the BTT I can do it fluorescent green or I can do the metallic green actually fish the metallic green quite a bit pull it back a little more here and I slide down on the extra small pull back so I'm not going to be get this to be too long bit bulky but not too long again the brush and brush this out and uh, the reason I do this is that I want this to be here we go I want this to be translucent and I want it to have a bit of uh, uh, sparkle to it again I have to wet this so I see what I do here then I just hold it back and put on one or two turns seeing that I built up the right shape and a hackle again tiny little uh, marabou feather see if I can find one with the right length and um, you can also if you look at one of these feathers you you will see how soft it is and how much motion you get out of few fibers and um, when you work when you tie with the BTT or the TTT uh, it will open up the construction and you will have turbulence and you will have a fly that actually even if it's small will look alive and you've uh, heard me say this a million times but a good fly should look like it will bite the leader and swim off swim off by itself cutting the little triangle tie this in and um, wind it on 
and you can see how few fibers I have here I do only one enough to cover up one turn tie it in secure it and cut off and uh, have to wet on this a bit and you can see it looks quite bulky to be honest with you but I know that when these fibers get wet they lose most of their volume so the fly will be fairly skinny when it's ready okay ending up with a little turbo disc here and uh, on this I will use our micro uh, I do a silver one and I do the same as on the other fly just a little glue put it away from the hackles hold back pick up some glue and pull this down I can feel take this away it's actually easier to pull down the cone when the thread is gone doesn't really matter but it's easier and take it out of the vise and do two or three mils with the good support for your scissors cutting this too close you ruin the fly hold it up and melt it down and you can see this is a nice hole this is a fast way of doing um, fly a summer fly that will be skinny uh, but with the brass turbo it's very light with the brass uh, btt the brass turbo tube it will open up and you will still have a fly with quite a lot of motion to it and uh, do them from 15 20 millimeter up to what is this maybe 35 40 millimeter and you will have a nice little collection fast in your box with extremely uh good fishing flies actually that are super suitable for this uh warm conditions and there's um there's another advantage with fishing uh samurai design instead of doing a regular tiny little fly uh, i fish the slim long wing fly a little bit bigger than I do with the others, which allows me to fish a little bit bigger hook. To go down, and I'm trying to change treasure. I'm gonna do one more thing for you. Uh, so I'm changing thread for you. I'm gonna do one more little thing. Just grease this up a bit. Because when, when I fish these ones, uh, one other thing we get a lot of questions on is to how do you how do you actually fish them? How do you put them on? And you slide this up on the leader and then you put the hook on. But the thing is that if you just tie on a hook uh, with a knot in the eye of the hook, that knot will not stay there. The knot will slide and the hook might fish sideways and the fly will lose balance. So you need to have something to secure um the knot in the eye it's not really a body but it's something that secures it and um maybe the 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 most common way i do it is that i just take a piece of fits medium and i slide that on the leader and then i just push this down uh over the uh, over the knot to secure the place where the knot is in the hook and of course since we have uh, different kinds of um, colors of the tubing it also leaves me with options to um, to change a little bit on the color of a fly if i want it to be extremely translucent i can go with the with the silver or the the uh, the glow one or the our clear one if I want it light I can do the white one but if I want um, 
fluorescent, I can just pick the color. But what, on the green samurai that I just tied, I changed now to our stealth thread, which is almost invisible. That's why I had so much problems putting it on, getting too old for this. Uh, and what I do is that I put a bit of mirage over. And the good thing with the mirage is that it picks up the color. And one of the things I really like is to put mirage over a block body. But first of all, the mirage is not so durable. The teeth of the fish will, will damage it. And also to, to make this even more shiny, I can just put a little glue on. Just make sure I get the glue all the way here. Before I, I put this mirage on, and here, make sure I have a piece of uh, plastic where there's no mirage. And then I just pull this on over the glue and it will be even more shiny. Take the thread and tie it in. I'm a bit careful when I hold the tube here because otherwise I get glue all over the place. And I cut this away and uh, I think I don't need to put some more glue, glue on here now. Just a couple of turns, hold it a few seconds. Since I see I have a bit of glue and I cut it off. Then I can pull this out, take a little glue and put a little glue over the thread to secure it. And um, I actually did a few here. And you can see how I here can do different uh, colors of this. Uh, I do, um, here I have one that's ready. And I can also do different length of these, meaning that I can decide where I want my hook. If I want it far away, far up in the front of the fly, or if I want it further back. Summarize I fish them, I show them the fish, the fly sideways, meaning fishing on a good belly or even retrieving. I don't like retrieving, but you know, I like to catch fish. So sometimes you have to do it. So this is, uh, this is uh, quite a big difference from the design I had here on this uh, some, right? It's still a long wing fly, but here is what I fish most of the time now. And it's a thin wing, few strands, and I fish it. What did I do with that one? Did I put the needle here somewhere? Here we go. But, and I fish it in front of a body like this. So this will slide down there. And I will get the hook right where it normally is, even on a fly that's tied on, on plastic. But here I can change those. And I can fish this, I can fish the green and the orange if I want, but maybe not that common for me to do, but I'll fish these to get it even more translucent. And um, my wallets today, I, I talk about the three wallet, the three wallet system where I fish TTTs, BTTs and loose bodies. And I now do the same on the small samurais and on the summer flies where I can uh, actually change um, I be, I'm very flexible on the water, which I really like. I mean, it's enough that the sun comes out or the clouds come out or a bit of rain or, or the light shades away or the water is a bit faster. You can adjust your fly um, to be what you think is the perfect fly. And I don't do this system only on the small ones. Uh, here is a maybe what a 10, 12 centimeter green samurai tied on the biggest BTT. Of course I would fish a bigger body here to get the hook a little further back, but take this away. But it's the same principle. 
it's a, it's a, come on now. It's a very nice way of doing a long uh, slim fly with a very thin body. I would do most of the sunrise I do on a uh, on a body that I tie the way I did here with only mirage, no dubbing, to get them to be slim and and translucent. Okay. That was all I was going to show you here mid-season and um, I tell you I'm successful with these and I sure hope you are. Here's a little cylinder variant. That's also good maybe on a sunny day. Um, and I hope you liked it. I hope you liked the flies. I hope you will find them in the corner of the mouth of the biggest salmon ever. And um, I want to thank you for watching this little film, our 29th. And uh, next month it will be our number 30. And we do, we do the same as always. We have our subscriptions up and running again. And uh, you can subscribe or buy the packs where you get materials for... Uh, tying at least 10 of these or if you're not a tire and you still want to fish the small sunrise we have these for you too and uh, our 30th little um, film next month and one thing I can say now is we're doing one change and we're changing our little uh, sticker into being uh, what we think more collectible Meaning it will be a sticker of the fly, not so much text and stuff. More a fly sticker than, than what these ones are. Okay, so again, thank you. And uh, I'm soon off to Norway again to catch some more fish, I hope. I hope you have a good summer. Thank you for watching.